Have you ever wanted to try something different on your quilt's edge instead of the regular square edge? Have you not tried it because you thought it was too hard or it took too much math to try and figure it out? If you hate math like I do, then this is your tutorial on a fast, easy, no math way on how to put scalloped edges on your quilt. And the tutorial starts right now. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome and Happy New Year. I must confess, this was my very first scalloped edge quilt. So I've researched on how to do a scalloped edge quilt. None of them seemed right for me. They took rulers and they took math and mm, that's not for me. This tutorial is mainly about how to do the scalloped edge. I do show you some of my binding technique, but this is not a full tutorial on the binding. This is mainly all about these beautiful round scallops. Enough talking already. Let's get scalloping. <laughs> Let's get started. You are not going to believe how easy this really is. First of all, you need to draw a circle on a piece of paper or you can print one out like I did. The main thing you have to remember about this circle is that you need to have a dark line outlining it. Now mine here was about seven and three quarter inches in diameter, just for reference. I made several copies on my printer. So now what you'll need is at least two circles of the same size of what you're going to use for your scallops. You can use any size circle really. Next, you're going to take a handful more of those circles and you'll fold them in half and then you'll cut them right down the middle so that you have several now of the half circles. The amount of half circles that you end up needing depends on how big or how small your quilt is. I ended up using about six on the side and then two of the full circles. Take your half circles and line them up just like you see me do here. This will tell me roughly how many half circles I will need. I am actually putting the curved part about an eighth or eighth scan of an inch away from the edge of my quilt there and I'm just eyeballing it at first. Looks pretty even to me, but let's go ahead and get our ruler out. And this is how we're going to measure. Remember that dark line around the circle? Well, if you look right here, you can see right through the paper onto the other side. Right there, I pointed to it. You can actually measure the spaces in between there so that you have roughly an even spacing in between each circle. Once everything gets all evened up, you're going to go ahead and grab some pins and just pin them together right along there. And then we're going to go ahead and trace around those curves. You can use a pencil or I used a water air soluble marker, but a lot of times I just use a pencil or whatever you have on hand. Nobody's gonna end up seeing this mark. It will be enclosed with the binding, so no worries. Before I trace that edge, I'm going to show you real quick if I wanted to add another curve on the side of my quilt, how I would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another half circle. And all I'm going to do is just squeeze them all closer together, just like you see me do right here. And there I added that one. And then you're going to just measure in between those two lines, the one that you can see through the paper and then the line that's on the circle that you can see right in front of you. I told you it was easy, right? <laughs> okay, so now you're going to go ahead and grab something to mark outside of the curves. I went ahead and put it back to the amount of curves that I wanted for this quilt. So all I'm going to do is just trace around all of these curves until they're all marked. Once everything is marked, go ahead and take the pins and the circle templates off. And then the next thing I did was I went ahead and put a stay stitch 
right along all of my curves on my quilt edge. The stay stitch will help add stability on the edge of my quilt when I go ahead and put the binding on. You'll notice here when I take my templates off of my quilt that I have safety pins all around the border. That's because the back was connected after I had quilted the quilt top. The next thing I do is stay stitch all around the curves, but I don't show you that on video. After you stay stitch all around the curves, the next thing to do is get some sharp scissors and cut up to each point, just like you see me do right here. You wanna get as close as you can without snipping those threads. You're going to do that all around. That will help us sew our binding down deep into that curve. You'll see here in a sec. So when I reach the bottom of that point right there, that is going to be when I spread that apart and then pull my binding around. Now take your time during this step. You need to be very careful and methodically sew nice and easily the entire binding all the way around, being sure to catch about a quarter of an inch of that binding down along that stay stitch line that you just made. Are you enjoying my new video on easy scallops on a quilt? If you found value in my video so far, go ahead, hit the like button and subscribe today. And why not? Go ahead and leave me a comment down below in the comment section if you decided to subscribe because of this video. And if you're already a subscriber of mine, Thank you so much, and leave me a comment anyways. Okay, back to the tutorial. So here I just have a stretch of footage in fast forward motion of me just sewing some of that binding around. So enjoy this few seconds of video. This is what it should look like so far. We only have one side of the binding attached. Our next step is to cut around all of those curved areas, cutting out all of that excess fabric. So that way, I'll show you here real quick, this is how we're going to actually bind it. You're going to flip that over, pulling that pink binding nice and taut to the other side, and then we're going to run it through our sewing machine, sewing from the front, on top through. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> In this next step, I utilize some double-sided tape to help me keep the binding folded toward the back while I sew it. Trust me when I tell you, this tip right here will save you a lot of frustration, definitely. Let me know down in the comments below if you would like me to do a video specifically on how I bind quilts. It's hard to squeeze all the information on quilt making into one video. Next, I take it over to the sewing machine and I stitch right in the ditch on the front. And this is the finished product. I am very pleased with this scalloped quilt. Have you ever made a scalloped edge quilt? Let's chat in the comments about it.
Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.